I love the feeling that I'm discovering something no one has ever discovered before. The great thing about working in the Near East is that our sources, these cuneiform texts, these clay tablets, come directly out of the ground. Until five or six years ago, Kurdistan for me was a region that was terra incognita. I would never have believed back in 2001 when I was working in Iraq for the first time, 150 kilometers west of here in Asur, that I would ever work in this area. Karen Ratna in northeastern Iraq. The specialist in ancient Near Eastern history is one of the world's leading experts on the history of Mesopotamia in the two millennia before Christ. Together with the head of the Antiquities Directorate, Kamal Rashid, the historian wants to study a rock tomb on the edge of the Zagros Mountains. The tomb dates from the time of the Median culture. The relief shows a Median and a Lydian king making peace. We can interpret this tomb facade as portraying the treaty these two states are concluding with one another, and that this act of peacemaking for a Median ruler in the 6th century was the central achievement of his life, the event that was supposed to be immortalized on his tomb. Peace is also a characteristic of Suleymaniyya, the largest city in the autonomous region of Kurdistan, Iraq, with over 1.6 million inhabitants. In Slimani, as the Kurds call it, there is also an archaeological museum, which was closed for years during the Iraq war. Now, recent finds from regional excavations thrill the visitor. The director of the museum shows the historian the newest exhibits. Every country's past is important to it, so it's no wonder that in this young Kurdish state there is a great deal of interest in people getting to know their own history better. The key to understanding this history is cuneiform script. Inscribed on clay tablets, it recorded agreements regarding taxation and finance. Ever more tablets are being discovered, but there is a shortage of cuneiform experts. The problem is that, unlike Latin and Greek, there are very, very few people who understand cuneiform. And so the ancient Orient has tended to be history's poor relation, even though it has so much to offer the historian. I've never had any difficulty remembering the signs, but it does look a bit like a beetle has crawled across wet clay. In the museum laboratory, the clay tablets are cleaned and prepared. Many finds go back to the Neo-Assyrian period, the 9th to 7th centuries BC. This is an era that particularly interests Karin Radner. She studies the written sources from the period in order to reconstruct the social conditions in the first major empire in human history. One recently discovered tablet could uncover further information. What she reads there surprises the expert. A woman was sold as a slave at the high price of 14 kilos of copper, a trade Radna had not anticipated on the former border of the Assyrian Empire. And there is another surprise too. The tablet is rock hard because it has been exposed to fire. This clay tablet has actually been fired. This means that the house where the tablet was kept, that is, the house of the purchaser, burned down. The tablet was inscribed in 620 AD. Five years later marked the beginning of the end of the Assyrian Empire, which immediately leads one to the assumption that this had something to do with the Medes starting to attack Assyria. Karen Radner traces the secret of the clay tablets to the Iraq-Iran border region. The evidence of the valuable barter transaction could become even more valuable if it is possible to identify the exact site where it was found. 
Do we perhaps need to redraw the eastern border of the Assyrian Empire? The expedition's first stop is a several thousand year old hill settlement in the Rania Plain. Remains of a sunken civilization are soon discovered. However, they are much older than the tablet itself. But where else could it have been found? During the period I am particularly interested in, the first millennium before Christ, it was very common to extend existing settlements by adding a lower part to the town. They didn't abandon the settlement up here on the well-protected crag, but extended it by a very large lower town. Even lower down, however, the researchers are disappointed. Still no sign of the Assyrians. Then Radner gets some news. The clay tablet is reported to have been discovered during ploughing in a field not far from the hill settlement. And here they really do find clay shards from the Neo-Assyrian period. Luckily, it's a really small and manageable site. The first place was also very interesting archaeologically. The topography was very promising indeed, but much too complex. When we then got to the actual place, I was not at all sorry that it was a really flat site, partly taken up by an industrial poultry farm. We can excavate here in the next few years. It's really easy to do. Even the tiniest finds, like these shards, can have a major impact on historiography. Professor Radner recognizes great potential for her discipline in the Sulaimaniya area of Kurdistan. The Austrian researcher wants to use some of the award money associated with her Humboldt professorship at LMU Munich for the new excavation project. Her mission is to put more emphasis on the history of the ancient world. My dream is that it should become a matter of course for ancient historians to take note of these early periods, these areas somewhat further to the east, and therefore it's very, very important to make the sources more accessible. When an Assyrian clay tablet is found somewhere, I'm often asked to decipher it because not many people can. So I'd be delighted if there were more competition.